Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 31 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, Cloud Computing Recruitment Specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about that creating a safe online environment for your business is a major concern for leaders today and it's no wonder that improving the security of IT systems is the number one priority for 55% of customers. Make sure you stay until the end of the show to get David's top three tips that for IT training departments need to consider for IT security. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great. It's a great topic. This keeps coming up. I think it's, it's becoming a really important focus in the cloud computing world and the training world as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Security, I think, is a, a real pain point around a lot of businesses and, and certainly depending on the size of the organization it really gives them a bit of free publicity that I, I'm, I'm sure they choose not to have so um, the amount of times we've read about the the good old s3 bucket being left open by someone because they've not uh, kept the default security settings so um, you know it's a, it's a really interesting topic and, and I think there there is a real need for training around security now certainly it was an interesting topic last week we had with Yuri uh, the CIO from NAB actually about security and and how that's really leading the business and, and governance and all that great stuff. So if you haven't watched that show, people, go back to the show we did last week uh, with Yuri uh, and check that out because that was absolutely fascinating what's going on behind the scenes with security and the National Australia Bank. So bring us back to this week's show, Dave. So how do you access your own cloud security training needs as an organization, Dave? Yeah, I, I think this is really um, kind of understanding what's going to be changing. And I think that a lot of IT our IT executives going forward don't necessarily understand it. So, you know, one of the things I, I, I promote as a uh, as really kind of a fundamental task that everybody should do is do a skills gap analysis in terms of where we are now, the asset state, where we need to be. Uh, what are the security mechanisms that are going to be important to us one year, two year, three years, four years down the line? How does it relate to cloud? How does it relate to on-premise? How does it relate to both cloud and on-premise? How are you going to basically do encryption? holistically within the company, deal with compliance, deal with certain data restrictions such as GDPR and the, the HIPAA in the United States. And these questions are complex. They're not necessarily questions we want to answer um, because they're very hard to figure out. But these really need to be leading the, um, leading the task going forward in 2018, 2019. And I don't find there's a lot of interest in making that happen unless there's some sort of compliance thing coming forward where you're going to be arrested for not doing it. But, you know, going forward, this has to be top on everybody's list. And, and the thing is, your first line of defense is training. And then kind of what took me back in reading this article was, you know, the staff educated and instructed on proper practices, the risk of cyber attacks or data leaks can be reduced by 70 percent. Well, I, I can tell you it's going to be 80, 90 percent, sometimes 100 percent within these organizations, because the human element of this is something we can't engineer or automate. There's always going to be human beings using these systems their eyes are going to look at the data that we're trying to protect. And just by doing that, that means that that information can be at risk. And, and so the ability to do training, the ability to, under, to train the administrators and the operators and the you know, DevSecOps stuff, develop, uh, you know, Dev security and operations, the ability to understand different encryption layers and do security across borders, which is, which is complex into itself because we can't you know, leverage all security technologies in all, in all, in all jurisdictions is something that we need to get into in training the operators, the developers, the leaders, the, the people who do the line management, and most importantly, the end users who are securing the data. And, and this is something that uh, seems to be falling by the wayside for many organizations going forward. And I get concerned about this because no matter how good of security I can build within these enterprises, it can be thwarted you know, just by the fact that I have people who don't understand what they're doing who ultimately just end up making mistakes and using the data. Yeah, look, 100%, I think you're right. It, it's, um, th there's so many points of weakness or points of failure within an organization when it comes to data and who's got access to it. And it almost, we have to strip it back almost sometimes. The industry is moving at such a high rate and a disruptive rate to certain industries that we almost look at retraining the trainers. 
uh, because there's there's things that you know that so much out of date once it gets to a certain level within the company or it's been you know certain levels of training have been rolled out that training is almost out of date so you know we've almost got to keep on retraining the trainers when it comes to IT and making sure that you know no stone is left unturned because you know six months down the line someone's gone through their training uh, and onboarding and that's out of date now so I think it's um there are so many points of failure it's it's a constant machine isn't it yeah, it's a kind of machine. And, and ultimately, you know, automating the training is something that has to occur as well. So we, we just can't show people the same old videos and the, and the same old, you know, text, you know, like we could in the past. Yeah, I could pick up a security book that was five years old and it would still be relevant. Now, if I pick up a security book that's five months old, you know, it has a tendency to be out of date. And so everything has to be online. Training has to be consistently updated the evaluations have to be there and you have to be able to spend the money to make it happen. So, you know, this is a matter of, of being a bit of a bother within these organizations and making training mandatory for users who are going to be in the systems and then make sure we update the training and have the training retaken. And I think that, you know, people who understand the importance of that aren't going to have a problem with it. And I think those are the folks that we have to, we have to, um, you know, attract to our business and, you know, someone who's thirsty and hungry for understanding how things work, whether you're operating the system, you don't understand the technical details or whether you're just using the system. It has to be all levels of training or all levels of people within the organization. Else, it's going to be a, a, a what I call a very bad outcome. Yeah, look, you know, security training can have such an impact on the business on so many different levels, not just from a, a point of where the business is at internally, but equally spreading out and being a problem publicly as well. And not only that, but damaging the integrity of the brand publicly uh, from a, a user a user point of view and, and how, how private their data is, if it is something that's going to expose their public data, such as email addresses, bank details, etc. So, yeah, security training is a big one. I'm glad, we've, I'm glad we've covered this off today, Dave. And look, it leads us on nicely to your three tips for IT security training, Dave. So if you'd like to share those, that'd be awesome. Gladly, Brad. So number one, funding, funding, funding. I mean, this stuff is going to take $50,000 per employee, whether it's an end user, an operations user, an executive or something like that. So you have to assign that amount of money per year um, for these people in perpetuity. And I know that's a lot of money, uh, millions of dollars, but you know, compared to the cost of a breach, uh, because someone uh, does something uh, dumb, let's say just carrying a laptop in the trunk of their car and uh, having, um, you know, things stolen and, you know, taking uh, USB drives out of the company and all that kind of fun stuff we get when you don't have users that understand where the limitations are, uh, it's going to save you a bunch of money. Also liability. So in other words, if you get sued because of some breach, you have good, you um, you know, have good training and really have uh, reliable records of who was trained when when they were trained, then your um, liability is going to be limited on that. I think courts are, you know, finding that over and over again. Leverage computer-based training, you know, which everybody does now, but use evaluations. And so tests that occur in the end. And I was kind of against this uh, until, I, until I started doing computer-based training. And I kind of found out that you know, people who typically halfway listen to some of this stuff, which I do sometimes, uh, and then you get to the evaluations and you really kind of find what you were zoning out on and have to go back and retake it. Uh, it really comes in handy in terms of not only validating you know what you know, it's not people trying to embarrass you, but the ability to kind of get through some kind of repeatable gauntlet. So reality is continuous evaluations, continuous training, and this doesn't mean you get an F and you can't take it again or you have to go back to the beginning of the course. This just means that you don't know enough to move forward. And so you're going to have to retake the test. And by the way, you need to go back and review this, this, and this and find out what's going on. And that has a tendency to kind of enforce uh, some of the basic knowledge that you need to go forward, whether an end user, an operator, executive, you know, detail and cloud native security system. There's all kinds of CBTs there. I would just insist on making sure that people are going to be evaluated and never be afraid to change direction in training. Uh, some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. You may have a bad CDPC uh, computer-based training provider and, you know, go ahead and change them out or leverage several at once. Uh, at the same time, play one against the middle. It's typically cheap uh, because all they're doing is producing videos, almost like YouTube. Um, so it's okay for you to demand that, that you reach a certain level of quality. And, and by the way, your securities uh, technology and direction and approach is going to change over time. 
So make sure that you're aligned with the training providers are able to align with the technology you're going to leverage. And that needs to be at least a six months lead time to understanding where you're going and getting the training in place. Oh, they're great tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. And thanks for being part of the, uh, the training show this week. Always a pleasure. Get some training. <laughs> yeah, and also, um, yeah, for the viewers that are watching the show, we've had a bit of a lighting issue in the studio today. So, uh, you know, it's got the, 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 everything's changed colour. So, <laughs> so but it should be okay. We worked through it in the end. Thanks for your patience, Dave. No worries. Is your hair caught in the light again? Plug myself in every, uh, every other week. But thanks for watching, everyone. And, and again, thanks, Dave, for being a part of the show. Um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show on security. We've covered so much. And, you know, it really it provide, it, it provokes some great questions. So we hope you got a lot out of this one. Uh, and remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and your colleagues. David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching. And until next week.